Greetings YouTubers. So today I'm working on the beetle. Uh, it sat in storage for a while. And it sat out in the woods under some pine trees and some maple trees. So getting it cleaned off, uh, getting the rest of the crud off it. And uh, right now when I started up, the backup lights come on right there. Both of them, they come on and they stay on regardless of what gear it's in. As soon as you start the car, they come on. So uh, I've narrowed it down. I'm pretty sure it is. I'm going to check the uh, reverse light switch, which is down underneath here. Uh, so I got to take this air box off to get at it, to uh, pull it out and check it. So we get a uh, pliers on that. Let me set these down. Pliers on that. Pull this tab back and pull the uh, sensor out uh, for the mass airflow, and then. Uh, Take a couple bolts, where are you, down there, and then I think maybe one or two else on the other side here. So we'll take this air box off, get it out of the way, and then see what's underneath there. All right, so I uh, got this, this is pretty easy. This, just pull straight off, and then there's also two Phillips screw heads. You need a long, a long handle, long neck, screwdriver to get that put on, pull pull this part out so yeah this is the 1.8 turbo beetle 1.8 turbo engine and there's not a lot of room to work on stuff because these fenders cut about a third of your engine space off you got to use usually a smaller smaller battery to get in here too because the uh, uh, power steering pump is kind of in the way and just you have to take your battery kind of angle it down and then shove it back in there thank god they put the negative side on there otherwise this would run the risk of arcing by having a positive touch and uh of course this has got to be different than other batteries i got a few extra batteries sitting at the house but when the posts are up here this is the negative and this is the positive so turn that and that's the way it is with the uh the tribute she used to have and with the Jetta it's reversed so luckily I was able to get these cables to come down in there and that saved me from having to go to the store and spend over a hundred dollars on another battery so yeah German engineering love it all right so let's get this pulled off we gotta take this off too get that off get this out of here back to business yeah thanks Fender Okay, there we go. Watch you don't have any metal down here touching the positive post. We're able to arc it. Yeah, I don't recommend putting your car outside for storage. Just figure out a way to keep driving it. Because once you start parking stuff and leaving it set for months and months, stuff starts going bad on it. Brake calipers start locking up. Reverse light switches keep hanging on. All right, so we got a collar hose down there. So let me fish down there and get that off. Then we'll get this box out of here. All right, so we pull, got that out of there. And we pull the air filter out. And what do you find? The squirrels hide out. Oh, found their little nest. That's another reason to try not to park stuff for months and months. All right, so what do we got? I hope it's not under the battery. Should be under here. This is all your linkage. And then uh, this little thing I call the golf club. As you go through the gears, this goes back and forth and then in combination with going up and down to uh, go through the H pattern. So where is that? Looks like it might be this guy right here. What happens is when you shift into reverse, there's uh, a detent on it and uh, one, of the, one of the levers swings across and comes across that detent and pushes it down and that turns on the light. Kind of like the brake pedal works. It's got a spring-loaded button that's up against the brake pedal at all times. And then when you push the brakes, 
the brake pedal, it pushes it away from that switch and then that turns it on so it's a normally closed switch. And once it's open, then it is making contact and then it's activated and then your brake lights come on. All right, so looking at it, it is this guy right here. So it's got two bolts on it, it looks like 5 16 and then the plug, plug-in runs underneath the battery and this bracket is also in the way so I don't know, I'll see if I can get down in there probably not without a, a universal swivel socket so uh, another inch or two to the right and I'll be able to get it without taking everything apart so it looks like I gotta take the battery out too so that's our guy and that's where we're going so see what we got all right so good news take the battery off you can get right at it so this is a nine millimeter Let's see if I can do this gently without breaking anything I think it should be able to pull the wire out underneath and then you can unhook it once you get it out of the way. Gently, come on baby. There we go. That's funny, the, the multi, multi-chorus bird up there is very tiny and I just dropped the bolt <laughs> hopefully it went all the way down to the ground so all that all that music is coming from a tiny little bird it's not a whole lot bigger than a hummingbird all right so the air box was hung on by this guy here this was just a quarter turn and I got that off so there were loose pull this out and my bet is it's stuck yep it's been sitting these are like 34 bucks at advance auto I'm thinking if I put a tiny little bit of WD-40 on there work it back and forth it will it will come loose because right now it's pushed all the way back and it's in the on stage so when you're show you how this works when this goes back and forth to go into reverse this little golf club head comes around and this end of a piece here comes across the striker hits that detent and that so like say the plunger is right here so while you're over here it does not do anything but once you get it right there that's in reverse and that's pushing that button down that's turn the lights on. As soon as you come out of reverse, the button springs back down and the lights come off. So as you can tell, the button's stuck and also identified by all the rust. So let me get a little wire brush in there, clean that out, and hopefully that should fix it. All right, so once we get this, get this up and running how it should, we'll uh, take it to the car wash clean all this crud out. I may hit it with an air gun to uh, get it cleaned out. You see the, the silver maples have had their way with everything around here. All right, so let's just clean that little detent button, get the rust out of there. All right, we'll just pull it. The other thing was it would be probably a week or two before this would come in the mail because they don't have them in the stores because this is an older Volkswagen so they don't have a lot of need of these so they they don't have any sitting on the shelf it's not a high demand item all right looks like we may have to PB hit it with a PB blaster let it soak all right so um, don't over saturate these things try and keep them dry they thrive in a dry environment. So let me sp spray that a little bit, see if I can work it. All right, so an easier option is to take the thing off. You get uh, 
this here you know, gently pull this up and then you can slowly strip it off like that and then it just pulls right out so this would be a lot easier to work on now that it's off the vehicle it is pretty easy to get at so just be careful when you take these off so you don't break break the clips or lose the clips all right now we can get get a better handle on working this around and seeing if we can get that freed up all right so we got a little bit of PB blaster sprayed in there I'm gonna take my ice pick run it around see if I can get this freed up hit it with the screwdriver push it up and down a few times and you say this this is the original VW uh, factory item so this this thing is uh, 90 99 11 years old so this is the original one that came with the car 99 now 11 20 21 years <laughs> sorry 21 years old so yeah we're just gonna work that a little bit and give it some time like I said normally it's not as big a deal but on, on these they're gosh like I said about 38 bucks and it's gonna take a week or two to get them so it's worth it to try and get this one fixed and then, then if not, then we'll go the new route. All right, so this isn't budging. I got my knife. This isn't budging. I got my knife in there and couldn't quite get that. I did stick my knife in here and I was able to get this off. And you can see the spring is in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screwdriver, small screwdriver, and gently push on this. And hopefully, thank you. And gently it'll push that button up so I'm gonna try that stick that in there work at see if that'll force that through I think what may have happened is when we parked this in the woods we left it in reverse because we backed it up and that would have kept this pushed in for so long so if you do park something leave it in first gear so word to the wise all right let me get a screwdriver on that all right so I pushed this real hard with the screwdriver with the flat blade and it, it didn't push the the button up So I took a screwdriver and pushed on this side on the inside and lo and behold It moved so I carefully get this out And there we go So you can see this all this rust on the surface is why it won't slide back and forth So I'm gonna take some light sandpaper Maybe 220 320 something like that I'm going to sand that rust off of there, and that should make it work good as new. So that's that's what the holdup is. It's supposed to slide back and forth, make contact with that spring inside that housing right there. So let me sand this down, and we'll put it back together. All right, so you want to put this on a flat surface, sand it and rotate it. This rust is a little on the heavier side, so I'm using 100 grit, but you can go lightly. Go light with the pressure and that'll still not gouge it real bad. So yes, the PB Blaster did work. So I just left it set for a little bit, within about five minutes, working it back and forth, she's freed up. Okay, let's take a quick look. Oh yeah, she moves. So get that Chevette all the way in there. Da 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 da. So I'm gonna sand that a little bit more, just for safekeeping. And then I'll use a little bit finer sandpaper. So it has less less of a chance of sticking in there. And then we'll put her all back together. All right, so we're all done. Sand that down. <laughs> and I was, for some reason, I was thinking this detent sat up in there higher. But if it sat up in there too far, uh, the part that comes against it would just hit it. Uh, but since it's rounded, it needs to stay near the edge. And that gets pushed out of the way. That turns the light on. And then you let it go, just like I said before. So, yeah, that's 
that's it. That's all the fur that sticks out. So this is ready to go. I'll put the uh, the bottom part back on, which I have right here. This is just uh, a bit of a sensor because that's rubber right there. So when that metal comes to that, it senses that. So we have the top and bottom on this, and we have three clip push on so I go this side and it's not lined up because that one's next to that go this way and all three of those line up so that's the proper way to put that back in put it in like that squeeze this down like that plug it in and it should be all good so that was pretty simple let's go plug it back in all right so I got the Bolt out from underneath the car. Does what it's supposed to do now. That's great. So let's go ahead and plug this back in. Put the bolt there so it don't get caught. Solid. This one way? Yeah. It's got two bolts right on top. So that was that right there. Kind of limited. There's no space back there. And we just close it this way. Sorry, can you see this? Yeah. Alright, so I'll take a little bit of these. Because I'm really easy about that clip to hold the place. Can't put anything down there. Do not lose that clip. There we go. See that? Yeah. Right there. Then yeah, it'd be nice to have a little bit longer cord there, Volkswagen. Thanks. Alright. So this goes on that way. That's the only way it can go on. Put two bolts in, nine millimeter. These bolts look like they're quarter twenties. And we're back in business. When I put stuff together, I never fully tighten it because I want them both to line up. We'll snug it. Snug one. And then make sure they're lined up and then you can snug them both down. All right, now all we gotta do is put, put the battery back in, put the air box back in, and we'll fire it up. Let's see what we got. All right, one side note, putting on the, the air box. It goes down through there, and for some reason there's this huge big hole, and I lost the washer that goes down in there. So what you can do is you get, get your can of starting fluid, brake cleaner, whatever, drill a hole in it, and then this will fit very nicely down in there. And you put your bolt in there and screw it down, and that'll hold that piece down. So a little tidbit for you. So we got everything put back together, got the battery hooked up. Now let's go ahead and start it. Uh, before, as soon as I turn the key to start it, it would come on. And no matter what gear you put it in, it would stay on because the detent was stuck, a little button. So let's go ahead and fire it up and then I'll put it in reverse a couple times, in and out to uh, check it, make sure we got it right.
right so as you can see it works so that's what fixed it so I like to say so a lot so anyways spend about 20 minutes and save about 40 bucks so that sounds like a good deal to me and we didn't have to wait fixed it right here without having to wait on parts so a lot of times if it seems like it's broke many times it's not and you can fix it yourself so that's it thanks for watching everybody catch you on the next video Thank you.